Hi everybody, James from Zaggle Studios here. Thanks for dropping by the video. If you like the video, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really appreciate it, it helps me out a lot. And if I missed anything, or if you have any comments about the video as a whole, please leave them in the comment section below. I look forward to hearing from you. With that being said, let's get into the video. So as you can see by the title, we're talking about memory management. And specifically, I'm gonna be talking about memory management in real-time systems. Now, what is a real-time system? We're not really gonna get into that, but Basically, what we can think about in terms of the application scope is we're looking at applications that are designed never to be turned off. They're in a perpetual running state, meaning that they need to be managed effectively so that if a user never turns off the device, the application can still run and proceed as totally normal. So instead of shutting something off, turning something on and off again to fix it, typically isn't the scope of what a real-time application is looking for. We want these applications to perpetually run without having issues that halt it and remove functionality from the system without notifying the user. And as you can imagine, memory management is actually something very important in this. So I'm gonna kind of assume you know the basics of memory management. And if you haven't, I'll link some resources below so you can take a look at what those are. So specifically, we're going to be talking about C and C++. I'm going to stick with C because C is a little closer tied to the hardware. So in C, there's something called malloc, and malloc is essentially memory allocation. Malloc is a baby of memory and allocation, right? Malloc. So this was provided to the C language to allow for programmers to have an abstract way of managing their memory. So basically, you pass malloc, you give it a size, and voila, you've got yourself a memory-protected data structure that is sitting in the heap size of your code segment. Now there's a few issues with this, specifically in real-time systems, so let's talk about that now. So dynamic memory allocation typically has an intrinsic problem when we're talking about a system that is designed never to be shut off or restarted. And that's the fact that you really don't know where your memory could potentially be coming from, and you don't have control, in malloc at least, where things are being placed inside of the heap space. And this can become an issue in a couple of ways. The most obvious one would be particularly not freeing the memory that you have set aside and allocated at the beginning of the program or during the program. And this can be simply be fixed by better programming habits essentially allowing yourself to say, okay, this piece of data needs to be dynamically allocated. We need to eventually free it. When does the start and the end of this allocation happen? So good programming practices and more experience can help you get better at that. However, there's something a little bit more sinister that can happen that isn't always obvious, and this is called memory fragmentation. So memory on a computer system, typically speaking, especially if you're talking about an array, is stored in row major order. And what that means is that pieces of data are contiguously placed in memory, meaning one after another. Every other element holds element of the data, and the data in between has some alignment aspect to it based on your architecture. So this means that if you allocate data on the heap, you can eventually end up in a position, if you've done malloc too many times, where a large portion of your memory can be unallocated, meaning it's free space, but unusable because the memory alignment is not in control and you can't actually use it from malloc. In this case, malloc would return null and then you're out of luck. So you can fragment your way out of dynamic memory allocation, which would result in some type of a seg fault or in the case that you just can't allocate memory at all. So then now your application is hosed. So as you can see, this provides a pretty big issue, especially in terms of fragmentation for a real-time system. Assuming that you're a perfect freer, meaning that you everything you allocate, you eventually free to be used later, you still don't know where it's being placed and it can lead to fragmentation, and this can be detrimental in a real-time system. But there's also things in terms of speed that can be a problem too. So when we're talking about a real-time system, a more generalized definition of it, basically systems that are designed around actions that need to happen immediately. And this also means that things are on a very tight timeline and need to be processed within a certain window. So typically these applications are very performance intensive and need to happen on a strict timeline budget. Having a memory allocator that takes a lot of clock cycles to be able to compute things and just allocate memory seems like a complete waste. And really, you can save clock cycles by writing your own custom allocator. But you're probably wondering, how can that be? I mean, shouldn't malloc be optimized for pretty much any machine that you throw it on? I mean, sure, to some extent, yeah, but just as a reference, I found a list here by Jonas Bonnier on GitHub about memory access times of different pieces of hardware. Now, assuming you have caches, different levels of caches at that, 
you can see the differences between the operations that require data to be fetched and executed from different areas on the hardware, specifically the difference between cache and memory. You notice how the cache is ridiculously fast in comparison to the memory. Caches have a specific size to them, and a cache line can effectively save data so you don't have to go all the way back to main memory to grab it. So this means that what you can do with a custom allocator over malloc is essentially program to the cache lines of your system, and this changes based on the hardware that you're operating on, so it's never going to be the same. x86 is going to be much different than something like ARM in terms of cache lines, and especially depending on the hardware you're working with. So typically in a real-time system, you need to customize even the slight nuances like this in order to get the most out of it. So we can save clock cycles from memory allocation and apply them to a more performance-intensive calculation or application area somewhere else. So not controlling where your memory is going can actually have multiple consequences in terms of detrimental performance or errors as a whole. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's a bit of memory management topic in real-time systems. Once again, if you liked the video, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really appreciate it. And if I missed anything, leave it in the comments below. I really hope to see you guys in the next video. This is James from Zygo Studios, signing off.